Good evening to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here with a Hurricane Matthew evening update. 7.45 Eastern Time. I want to show you the visible satellite animation. The sun has set across Matthew here. Look at that well-defined eye. Even in the nighttime visible, perfectly round eye there. And let's switch over to the infrared enhanced and you can see these very cold cloud tops. How do we know they're cold? Well, the different reds here and the grays indicating higher cloud tops in the atmosphere by virtue of measuring the air temperature, or in this case, the cloud temperatures. And when you get over into this area here, we're talking minus 70, minus 80 degrees, and that is cold. Why does that matter? The higher these go up into the atmosphere, these hot towers of convection, as it's called, the more intense the rainfall underneath and the more efficient the engine of this hurricane, now a Category 4, is running. Very well-established outflow in almost all of the quadrants here. A little bit of upper-level wind shear, if you want to call it that, coming over here. You can see that, but it's not affecting the core of this system at all. still far away. In fact, my telestration color is the same color as the central dense overcast. How about that? What a coincidence. So this will move on off to the west and west-southwest with time, and then eventually turn up towards Jamaica, which is under a hurricane watch, of course. Why is this so strong? Part of the reason is the warm upper ocean heat content through this region, and that's only going to get warmer and higher as it moves towards Jamaica and also up into the Bahamas post-Cuba. Very warm temperatures along the ocean surface. But also, more importantly, that warm water extends deep into the ocean. And so this is just churning up more and more warm water along its path. And it won't surprise me if this becomes a Category 5. And it won't surprise me if it weakens from time to time through what are called eye wall replacement cycles. And that is a very complex structural thing to describe why that happens in hurricanes. But basically, you get this contraction of the eye, a new outer eye wall will form, the old eye and eye wall kind of die away and a newer larger system develops within that core and then it contracts and these just go on and on and on. If the earth was completely covered in water and everything was warm enough to support it, it would just, like Jupiter, you know, with its infinitely running storms. But luckily they run into colder water usually and they die out. And in this case, uh, this will hit land that's not lucky because people live there. That'll be a problem, obviously, for Jamaica uh, under hurricane watch, as I mentioned, and then eventually Cuba. And it looks like the western part of Haiti could get in on some very heavy rainfall. I'll talk about the impacts a lot more tomorrow and Sunday once we know how close this does, in fact, get to Jamaica and then Cuba. So this is the 18Z GFS, again, the 500 millibar uh, portion of the atmosphere about midway up. This is the hurricane down here represented by a very round ball of energy. This is a very large upper air low and a trough that's carved out as part of that. So this is lower pressure in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And this is a big mountain of air out here, high pressure. And Matthew is going to try to go somewhere between the two over the next week or so. But it's more complex than that, believe me. So I'm going to just show you the afternoon run. As far as I know, the 18Z run of the GFS does not have new data put into it, uh, whereas the 0Z run will incorporate the new upper air data from the hurricane uh, reconnaissance missions flown for basically reconning the atmosphere out here to give the models a better sample input. And I don't believe the 18Z has that. I could be wrong. Uh, so this is sort of like an in-between run, but this is what it shows nonetheless as I move through the frames here. Over the course of the weekend, tomorrow you see it moving steadily along to the west and west-southwest. The steering layer starts to collapse just a little bit up here, so it slows down and then starts to turn more towards the northwest with time, again heading closer and closer to Jamaica. And on this particular run, it goes over the eastern tip, kind of fades west just a little bit. The center passing just east of Kingston, but we're talking about 72 hours out or so, we know a lot can change there. And then, very interesting on this run, it ends up uh, up here in the northwest Bahamas, not too far off of West Palm Beach and Fort Lauderdale at day five. This is about as close as I've seen it get 
in the GFS recently, and then from here it actually gets much closer to the uh, southeast coast, but we'll worry, worry about that much later. Uh, believe me, we have plenty of time to, to I don't want to say worry, because when you worry about something, that means you don't understand it very well. And I want to make sure people do understand, uh, A, you're going to have time to get ready for this if it's headed to the Carolinas or Georgia or Florida, uh, and B, you know, you should be ready already because it's hurricane season. But really, again, the most important thing to remember, uh, this is going to be impacting Jamaica first and then eventually Cuba, and that's very important. I'm going to go through these frames one more time. As it gets up here close to Jamaica, Sunday into Monday is when that looks like it'll happen, clicking the mouse here. So you see it approaching uh, overnight hours, Sunday into Monday, so that fortunately it looks like it could be near the daylight hours. That's always a good thing. Very early to mid-morning on Monday, right there over the eastern portion of Jamaica as I zoom in here. Check that out. Very, very tight vorticity here. Lots of energy. In other words, this is a strong hurricane. Kingston would be just right over here. So in this particular run of the model, the eye would be just off to Kingston's east. But, you know, that's just what this shows right now. Let's wait and see tomorrow. And then Sunday will really be the big day, and I can address the impacts much closer to the time of landfall. In the meantime, if you're in Jamaica, you need to be getting ready. Uh, one of the things you're going to want plenty of is water, fresh water. If this is as bad as it looks like it could be, then fresh water could be hard to come by, and you want to make sure you have plenty of that as it is essential to life. And then, of course, food and other staples to keep you healthy in the recovery process. Maybe it'll miss, but hope is not a planning tool, so you can't hope this thing away and waste all your time hoping and not getting ready. Believe me, uh, luck favors the prepared. Have yourselves a great evening. I wish I had better news for you, but sometimes it is what it is, and we need to deal with it, and hopefully this information helps you understand a little better about what to expect and what we're thinking here and explaining what the Hurricane Center is showing as well. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. As always, thanks for tuning in. I'll have more videos starting tomorrow morning.